mock draft 3.0 we've got trades we've got five quarterbacks being drafted in round one by the way of the 2024 nfl draft today i'm going to talk about the first 10 picks of the 2024 nfl draft in my mock draft 3.0 here on football scout 365. Now, before we get started, I want to remind you to check out our website, footballscout365.com, where you can find all of our written content, including our full first round mock draft 1.0, 2.0, and this one 3.0 that we're going over now. Again, you can find all of that and more on our website, footballscout365.com. Now, in this first round mock draft, I've got five quarterbacks going. I project three to six quarterbacks should be drafted in the first round of the 2024 NFL draft. In addition, I've got five wide receivers off the board in the first round. You could see between four and seven. I've got a total of six offensive tackles going in the first round of the 2024 NFL draft. That could be a little high, but anywhere from four to seven could happen in round one. I've also got seven defensive backs. I wouldn't overlook this defensive back class whatsoever. It's very deep and talented as well. You could see anywhere from four to eight going in round one. And I've got five total edge rushers. Uh, I might be a little low in terms of the edge rusher department. We'll kind of see how things shake out at the end of the NFL combine and what the mindset is post combine. Once these guys interview, with the NFL teams and, and teams start to discuss these guys a little bit more. And then the echo chambers begin on social media. Uh, all of this stuff is going to probably change once again, but that's where we are to this point. All right. So without further ado, let's dive into my mock draft 3.0. We're going to go over the top 10 picks. Again, you can see the full 32 picks on our website, footballscout365.com with the number one overall pick. We've got the Chicago bears. Now there's a lot of speculation out there. Will they trade the number one overall pick? How far are they willing to trade back? Will the Chicago Bears just stay at number one overall and draft Caleb Williams? There's a lot of smoke out there that that is going to, in fact, be the case. I think after watching the Super Bowl and seeing what Patrick Mahomes was able to do and then seeing Caleb Williams tape and thinking, wow, very similar skill set to Patrick Mahomes. Why not take a shot, reset ourselves at quarterback in terms of, of rookie payout and, and just build around the next guy? Uh, but in my mock draft 3.0, I believe the Bears are bluffing and that they are willing to trade out of that number one spot. How far back they're willing to trade, I don't know. Uh, but in this circumstance, it's the commanders willing to give them the most to keep another team from jumping them into that number one spot, jumping over them at number two to number one, allowing them to draft Caleb Williams instead and get the hometown kid from the DC area back in Washington at quarterback and in your set. And this is why I believe they brought in Cliff Kingsbury. You didn't bring in Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury to be your offensive coordinator if you didn't believe you had a shot at drafting Caleb Williams at the end of the day. Now at number two overall, we have the Chicago Bears who just traded with the Commanders. This is a pretty easy pick in my opinion, unless they're gonna go quarterback here, they could. Uh, but in my opinion, they go wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. They are just gonna continue to build around Justin Fields. We're going to go with the mindset ahead of the combine that that is, in fact, the case. They have a ton of additional draft capital now. They get the wide receiver of the future here, a potential all-pro player, uh, an instant impact guy at the position out of the gate, and you're going to pair him with DJ Moore. Look out, this Bears offense is going to be super explosive in 2024 with the addition of Marvin Harrison Jr. Now, with the number three overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots, they could go quarterback here. They could stick with Mac Jones. They could trade out of this spot. There's going to be a ton of teams looking to move up. So they could gain a ton of additional draft capital to keep building. Uh, but in this mock draft 3.0, we're going to go with quarterback Drake May out of North Carolina. We're not going to stick with Mac Jones. We might keep Mac Jones uh, in the fray, maybe have uh, Drake May play behind Mac Jones at the start, make them compete early on, and then just kind of slowly get Drake May acclimated to the NFL level. I always believe that's the best case scenario for any quarterback. Now with the number four overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft, if Marvin Harrison Jr. is not available, the Arizona Cardinals will select wide receiver Malik Neighbors out of LSU. Uh, this is a no brainer in my opinion. He's a versatile wide receiver. You can line him up all over the formation. You pair him with the versatility of Kyler Murray, the athleticism of Kyler Murray. It's going to be hard to cover this guy for longer than three seconds down the field. It'll be interesting to kind of see if this offense can take it to the next level with a guy like this. But I think your, your chances are pretty good. Now pick number five, another no brainer in my opinion, the Los Angeles Chargers, they're in need of a tight end. 
Why not get the number one tight end off the board? And that is Brock Bowers. In my opinion, a generational talent at the position. And I believe that this, this new chapter of the Chargers offense, you're going to see a lot more bigger personnel sets. One back, two tight ends, or two backs, one tight end. You're just going to see bigger formational sets. Out of the Chargers, you're going to see a lot more play action pass game and a lot more usage at the tight end position. Those are staples in almost every single Jim Harbaugh offense. It was a staple of the Michigan offense for years. It was a staple of the 49ers offense and the Stanford offense when he was there as well. So no doubt in my mind, if this guy is available here at pick number five overall, why not? Unless you're going to trade back and and you're going to gain more additional draft capital, which I can say that about any of these teams in the top five. But in Mock Draft 3.0, we are going to go with Brock Bowers. No brainer. It's the one guy everybody's talking about going to the Chargers in the first place. Now, with the number six overall pick, the New York Giants, they're going to solidify their offensive line. They're going to pick offensive tackle Joe Alt out of Notre Dame. This is also a no-brainer to me. If you don't have Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr. available in this spot, you might go Roma Dunze here. But outside of that, you go offensive tackle here or you trade back and gain additional draft capital if you have that opportunity presented to you as well because there's excellent offensive tackle talent outside of the top 10 that I think could be available for the Giants. But in this particular mock draft, we're going to go with Joe Wall. At number seven overall, we have a trade. Now, this is where the Tennessee Titans are currently sitting. In this mock draft, I've got the Denver Broncos. They're not messing around anymore. They need to get in front of the Atlanta Falcons, who are also a team looking for a quarterback. And the Denver Broncos are going to move to that number seven pick and they're going to draft Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy. The versatility of J.J. McCarthy at the position, his mobility, his arm talent. He's already got a solid floor. He would fit the Sean Payton style on offense in a massive way right out of the gate. And if you do keep Russell Wilson for one more year, hypothetically, J.J. McCarthy could sit behind him until he's ready to go and learn from Russell Wilson at the position. I think stylistically, uh, J.J. McCarthy is more of what Russell Wilson used to be in terms of mobility, escapability, finding a way to get out of the pocket and find open receivers down the field. He's got the accuracy and the arm talent, like I already mentioned. This is a guy that once that NFL combine is over, I imagine is going to jump into the top 10 of a, a lot of NFL mock drafts. Uh, once we get into the month of March. Now with the number eight overall pick, we've got the Atlanta Falcons. They still need a quarterback and the Atlanta Falcons are going to take Jaden Daniels out of LSU and they're going to pair him with B. John Robinson, Tyler Algier in this offense. It's going to be explosive. It's going to be dynamic. And a lot of people are saying, hey, the Falcons could trade for Justin Fields if the Bears, in fact, do decide to take quarterback with the number one overall pick or even if they trade back a few spots and still take a quarterback in the top five. Why not take the next best available quarterback on the board, get that versatility at the quarterback position and really open your offense up, provide that dynamic player similar to Justin Fields. If you're going to take him, why not go with a guy that has that similar skill set with a much snappier release at the quarterback position? I think Jaden Daniels would be a great opportunity for the Falcons. At number nine overall, we've got the Chicago Bears, their second top 10 pick, and they're going to pick edge rusher Dallas Turner out of Alabama. They're going to sure up the edge rusher position. They've already got an elite wide receiver to pair with DJ Moore on the offense. Now they're going to go edge rusher on a defense that was already improving a year ago. I think this would be a home run pick for the Bears, and it helps them continue to solidify uh, the defensive side of their roster. At pick number 10, it's obvious the Jets, they need help on the offensive line. They're going to go with the high upside offensive tackle out of Penn State in Olu Fashino. Now at the end of the day, I think the Jets probably go free agency for offensive line especially offensive tackle. They need an instant impact player at the position. Uh, But even if you do that, maybe you still get an Olu Fashino for the future. I think it'll take him probably a half year to a year to really kind of get going uh, to where you're comfortable and confident enough to get him out there. Uh, You probably start him off maybe even at right tackle initially for the Jets uh, as a rookie if you want to get him out there immediately. But that would be an excellent pick, in my opinion, for the future of the franchise, not just in the immediate. Okay, that'll do it for the top 10 picks in my Mock Draft 3.0. In the comments section, let me know your thoughts. Who do you think should or should not have been picked in the top 10 of my Mock Draft 3.0? Again, I want to say thank you for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more great NFL Draft content.